Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video well I'm just going to remind you the three books that are on sale drink tea and read the paper if you're a green belt and a black belt and you want simple instruction on how to apply your skill design of experiments for 21st century engineers and finally a statistical process control for small batch production. They are all available from lulu.com and the links are in the video below. Welcome to the latest video and in this video what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about well the the, the really bad habit of trying to analyze the crap out of every set of data and every process when we're dealing with a Six Sigma project. So one of the problems I have with lots of my clients, they come to the Six Sigma class thinking it's all about the maths. I'm going to get a piece of software and the piece of software is going to analyze all of this wonderful data that we collect in production and the magic bullet the silver bullet is going to appear out of the analysis. I'll find the root cause, I'll turn a dial, and the sun will come out and the problem will disappear. Most people have a problem not with signal. That's an adjustment of signal. Most people have a problem in their processes with noise. And I want to show you what noise does to your mathematical analysis. So job one, job two, and job 25 is always to eliminate noise. Because without doing that, the maths doesn't have any meaning whatsoever. Now in order to make the point, and this is the reason why I'm sitting at the table today, I like to use dice as a good example. So I've got 20 dice on the table here. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and find a root cause. So the 20 dice represent 20 variables in your process. Because we know their variability. We know that they're all going to swing from 1 up to 6. So they've all got a certain amount of variability. And as I roll them, I can work out a total for the 20 dice. Now we're going to do some analysis. Now it doesn't matter which dice I pick because the effect is going to be the same for all of them. But the one we're going to work on, look, is this, is this red dice. Okay, so we want to know what effect the red dice is having on the total each time I roll. Now one of the reasons why I use dice is because, of course, we already know the answer to this. We already know that each time this dice increases by one, it will have an effect of making the total go up by one. So we already know the answer to this analysis, which is fantastic because when we do it on the computer, you'll be able to see exactly what's happened and how the noise, the other 19 variables, would blind you to the use of using the red dice for any use whatsoever. In other words, can we use the knowledge that we learn from this single variable, this single root cause, would it be of any use to us? Now, I've spent some time, I've rolled the dice um, a number of times, can't remember exactly how many, and I've collected all the data, so let's just have a look at my, yeah, a hundred times. So I've rolled the dice a hundred times. I've worked out a total, and of course I've got a record of what the red dice is up to. So let's go to the computer and have a look at the analysis that I've done. So here's the data set. Um, it could be like any data set that you've got. It's production data and you're collecting every piece of information you possibly can in the hope that you're going to learn something one day and you're going to do something much better than you currently do. So we've got 20 columns of data. Then we've got a performance criteria on the end there, which is highlighted in the green and the red dice we put the red dice right on the end and I've colored it in red so you can see what's going on so there's the 
There's the production data, if you like. Then what I've done is I've tried to do what the Six Sigma um, people, some of my clients, some of the Six Sigma delegates try to do, which is I've tried to do some analysis because that's the answer, isn't it? Analyze the crap out of everything and everything will be right with the world. So I've done a simple regression analysis. What effect does the red dice have on the total? And now let's go to the regression. Let's go to the regression, the scatter diagram that I've created and see what it's telling us. Okay, now look, the first thing to notice, look at all the noise on that diagram. So we've plotted one dice against the total that's coming off the process, the total that's coming out of this process. And we've done some regression analysis. Now the regression analysis is working brilliantly because what it says, look, look at the coefficient up here. So the coefficient up here in the red, in the red field, it basically says each time that the red dice increases by one, the coefficient says the total will increase by 1.05. So actually, the regression analysis is quantifying the effect of the red dice. It's quantifying the effect of the red dice perfectly. It can see a one for one relationship. So that's fantastic. You can see that, that's no problem. But look at the R squared. The R squared is just 0.07. Now what that means is it's a signal to noise number. So that means your signal is just 7% of what's going on and the rest is noise. So if the red dice here is just 7% of what's going on, is it any use to you? Is it a root cause? Are we going to be able to make the process dance to a particular tune? Is this the silver bullet? Well, clearly it isn't, because it's been blinded by all of this. The 20 variables that are all noisy. You see, when you've got 20 variables all bouncing around, there isn't a root cause. There is no mathematical analysis going to find you the silver bullet in this data set. The process is a controlled disaster. What you need to do is to take each one of these and reduce them down. Maybe get them down to, let's say twos and threes. Maybe twos and threes, and we can take the we can take the noise out of the process. Now the red dice might still be moving from one to six, so it's still got the same power to move the result. But all this noise gets removed. And if we remove all the noise, we start to get more signal. And the silver bullet starts to appear but that silver bullet only exists once you do process flow cause and effect identify the variables and eliminate the input noise to your process that's the only time mathematical analysis will work it's the only time root cause will work get rid of the noise now let's just do that let's create a table where what we've done is all these other variables have been reduced down to let's say twos and threes and let's do the same analysis and see what happens okay let's have a look at that now okay so going to the computer what I've now got is I've now got a situation where I've I've created a table of random numbers as if these dice didn't go from one to six they went from two to three so what I've done is I've taken 19 variables and I've crushed the variability in those variables. And now I'm going to see what this thing is doing in amongst all of that variation. Now if we look at the, the computer, once again look, the equation. The regression equation is working pretty well because it's saying for every one of these you get an effect of 0.99. So in almost 
one for one, which is exactly what this thing is doing. But look at the R squared. The R squared has gone up from 7%. It's now gone up to 34%. So this thing now, this variable, has become 34% of the effect on the process. This is beginning to get important. Now, don't get me wrong. I've got, I've got 20 variables here, and this is only one variable. The other thing you don't have in, in this situation, of course, they all have an equal effect. So in the physics, they all have an equal effect on the physics here. In a real situation, of course, one or two of your variables might have a disproportionate effect. So as you calm the noise down from all the small and, and random variability that's bouncing around your process, the important variables, and maybe there's not just one of them, maybe there's two or three of them, the effect of these things begins to get more and more important and more and more useful to you. Because with all that noise, their importance is, is, is not useful. It's not useful to you. You can't do anything with their power to move the process around because the process is doing this all day. Now that we've removed the variability, we've crushed the variability in the 19 variables. The red dots, the, the golden nugget, the, the silver bullet starts to appear. But that only happens mathematically once you crush the variability in your process. So there's two types of analysis in a Six Sigma pro project. One is a process analysis to crush variability. One is a mathematical analysis to find the silver bullet. You have to do the variability control first. It's a practical, hard yards analysis. Nothing to do with mathematics at all. There is no mathematics going to help you with this particular part of your project. You have to fix variability. And then the maths comes alive. So, fix the practical variability and find your silver bullet. Thank <laughs> you.